Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and good night. I don't know what time you're listening to this, but we are here, Life Origami Podcast. My name's Greg Dixon. And Amethyst Dixon. Amethyst. Amethyst is my business partner, my wife, my co-collaborator, conspirator, getting in trouble with person. <laughs> so here we are, once again. Well, this week... Uh, We've got a number of interesting topics we're excited to be talking to you about. And it's kind of thinking it's going to be Transitions Week. Kind of talk about, but today we're talking about transitioning from the empty nest and how we can create a second act, so to speak. And that uh, uh, when the kids move out, your life's not over. It's just beginning. It's just beginning. So you paid your price. You paid the dues. You've been to jail. <laughs> Don't say that. You got that. the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Oh, okay. They're just little, wonderful little monsters. <laughs> wonderful little monsters, yeah. They've, uh, you got the t-shirt. Uh, you've been there. You showed up for your family over and over and over again. And you've... Everything revolved around family. Yeah, and you know, I, I so I, you know, I, I'm going to be speaking about it from my perspective as a man, and I'm sure you'll, as being a father, I'm sure you'll have a different perspective talking about it from a woman's perspective. I would think. And having more, you had one child. I had. Uh, I had one. I was a rabbit. I had four. You had four, so between us, we had five. So it's like a nickel. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I guess the the thing that I was think I've been thinking about this because uh, we're we're both kind of been going through our empty nest for a while. It's been kind of a progressive thing, but <clears throat> sometimes the nest is empty, but then they like to come back. Or hey, can I borrow some money? <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I get. Yeah, <laughs> and I just go. La, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we think it's it's the perfect time to be stepping into your second act. And yeah, there's no question that there are significant adjustments to be made. And this week we're talking about, this is transitions, talking about transitions. But we really think that the, the biggest challenge for me personally has been to think about what I want. Because I tended to always not think about what I wanted or even I would never even think about what I wanted because I would just end up disappointed. I thought that um, what I wanted was the same as what I was doing and when I uh, had a family. And it didn't occur to me that there'd be no new stuff and that I would move on and um, have different interests. Um, the person I was when I first started having babies, um, was a different person for the time right. we all grew up. And my oldest was 11 years older than the youngest. So she Big grew up gap. and left. And right. I remember what that was like the first time any of my kids left. But I still had yeah. the other three at home, <clears throat> right? So I was still mom and still in the groove of doing what moms do and going to work and having <laughs> a business and going to school and all those things. Um, but then, <clears throat> then the divorce happened, and the kids grew up, and mm. then I was at I was at the state where what do you do after divorce, and what do you do as an empty nester? Which we're going to talk about in uh, tomorrow about in, in, about divorce, the about divorce, transitioning after divorce. Yeah, but I we think that this is the time that you should be really looking at indulging your whims and and give yourself like be your own genie grant yourself three wishes that you might not have been able to afford financially or time wise <clears throat> now it's pretty tough if you're going to look at it from that perspective you can't use the time excuse anymore you don't have time there's no time there's no time i gotta cook dinner i gotta wash the floor i gotta swab the decks I was just about to say that. 
for you. Yeah. <laughs> I've been learning from you. <clears throat> and so, you know, you can't use time, but finances, you know, you may not have unlimited finances, but if you really desire something, you can, with the right financial plan, you can make it happen. You can find the money, you can make the money. So there really aren't any of the big, typical, normal reasons and excuses we had to procrastinate. Now we have new ones. <laughs> Tell me about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have new ones. Well, you have it's about ones. giving yourself permission to go uh, after what you want or to even um, muse about something, doing something different, like perhaps... Uh, Perhaps you want to go back to school, and mm. you know. Oh, yeah, who goes back to then school there's all at the your age? Stories, yeah, exactly. You know, a who's going to want? You're going to be competing against those twenty-five-year-olds coming out of college. Who's going to want to hire an old fart? You know, <laughs> right, <well. laughs> which could be over thirty years old for a twenty-five-year-old. <laughs> Some of us are more party than others. <laughs> but you know, we think the biggest. But what you really, I think speaking to is that the biggest challenge would be to choose to actually choose to do something for yourself that at least from my perspective i think also you have to change your mentality of being um the mother who uh, stays at home for the kids or is just feel needs to feel useful and needed in order to feel worthy of something mm. and you have to let go of that I had to let go of it um, took a long time that just because I wasn't needed by those kids in the same capacity right. doesn't mean um, that I, I have no value and and it took a while to figure out you know what who am I what do I want and what are my qualities now um, you know mm. it wasn't about I, li I used to live every everything was for the kids. Through the kids, everything yeah. You did you know, like um, three o'clock rolled around, you stopped shopping, and you had to get home because the kids were coming home from school. And you had to start um, thinking, planning what's going to be for dinner. Yeah, you couldn't watch TV without a hushed tone because the baby's in bed or something, and then they grow up and you go to the movies and you find yourself you can't laugh out loud because you think you're going to wake the baby up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. If you're listening, if you've got children and a baby, uh, you probably aren't listening to this, but <laughs> you're busy you're transitioning from an empty nest, but you got a, your nest has just got filled. Thank you very much. And but yeah, you know, I, I, I was thinking about that though, is that we go from being mummy to mum to mother from daddy dad to father as the kids age you know and, and i think because one of the things the things i've had to do mentally ascend to is to stop responding like daddy or dad but to think as a father to think of myself as an older male fathering an adult child is a very different yeah. kettle of fish than the rescuing tendencies that I used to have. And I like to think of it as uh, working on the business rather than in the business. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of getting in their business, you're yeah. working around, working around their business. You're uh, giving them a hand up to help themselves and you're letting them go through their own learning curve. Right. You know, so you're not there rescuing them anymore and, you know, the umbilical cord has been cut and uh, it's time to let them go on and do their thing. And you know what? They're expecting you to do the same thing. They don't want to be at home worrying about whether you're you're lonely or if you're sitting there waiting for them to call. They right. want you to have a life. And, um, you know, so they don't want that responsibility. They, they want to just get out and, and live their own life and be thinking about themselves and what they want. And, and, and not thinking about us. Right. Yeah, and they expect us to go on and do the same thing. So we have to reinvent ourselves just like they do as a teenager or an, a young adult going out on their own. Yeah. We have to reinvent ourselves too. We have to figure out who are we now today, not who were we um, five years ago, but today now that they've, they've moved out. And sometimes it takes five, ten years after they move out for you to finally give yourself permission 
to try something new and uh, maybe do something like go on a vacation without telling them. <laughs> and then let them know after, maybe at Christmas time. Right. You know, oh, by the way, you know, we did a, a, a trip around the world or whatever it was in 30 and One days. time I was in Costa Rica and we were uh, exploring um, around the pyramids and got a phone call from home and had a conversation and uh, uh, didn't tell them we were out of the country. Yeah. Because they, they didn't know. Now, uh, but the thing that I think we want to talk about the gap. Mind the gap, because when you when the kids move out or when they go to college or whatever, there's a gap period. You're talking about that void. Yeah, there's a void. There, there's a gap. Are, which side of the gap are you on? If the kids are if if your if your nest isn't quite empty and they're about to go to college or about to move out or getting married and they're moving out permanently. Uh, there's a gap. There's going to be a period of time, maybe like you call it the, the, the gap year, where it's probably going to be like, oh, my God, it's so quiet. This is so awesome. And you find lots of projects to do, cleaning projects, and then it'd be fixing up projects and stuff. But after you run out of projects, you know, after a period of time, when you're on the other side of the gap, that's where the I think the real identity crisis hits. On which side of the gap? The beginning of it? Or? On the other side of the gap. So let's take a case where the kids are the kids are getting married. The kids get married and they move out on their own. Now the so the house is empty. It's just uh, me and the wife, and you know, and and we're alone. So there's that year of adjustment. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. There's the year of adjustment. The year of transition. Where you're getting used to, you're not having to get up and shake the bed and squirt them with water to get their asses <laughs> into college or high school or whatever, right? <laughs> no, you don't have to do the three o'clock hustle, yeah, right? To hustle up some grub and uh, that or that sort of thing. Your the entire routine, it's like somebody takes your life and, sh and turns it upside and, like, shake, turns it upside down and shakes it and throws it out on the floor. It looks like dog's breakfast <laughs> but there's that gap here so there's this transition period on the other side of the gap I think that's when the the true identity crisis begins to set in because now by this time you've settled into a new routine of some sort I think at that point um, then you start to wonder hmm, there's got to be something more and exactly this just uh, doesn't seem to be enough anymore. I'm just getting by and I want to thrive instead of just survive as a empty nester. And, right. Um, so those are all normal feelings. It's normal to begin thinking that way and questioning things. And, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, because as caregivers, like we learn to put our family's needs ahead of our own needs. Oh, yeah, that's right, too. And the... So we lived a lot of our life in denial of our desires, stuffing them, them away because there are always other priorities, other pressing needs, Isn't or it? you're just trying to not to hold some money for some unexpected expense like <laughs> like uh, they, they, they need braces or, uh, you know, you, you got to write a $3,000 check to the dentist or some damn thing that, or, you know, they need their wisdom teeth removed removed uh, and then because when they remove their wisdom teeth they turn normal <laughs> because they don't have all that pain they get their personality back they stop being a pain in the you know what <laughs> and i guess I they're not know-it-alls then too once those wisdom teeth are gone. well one could hold <laughs> <laughs> well just think about it a couple months ago we went mm. and bought you some clothes and you're like, oh, should I get the blue ones or the black pants? Yeah, and you said and both. And I said both, and why don't you get two of each? <laughs> yeah, and it's like uh, she gets some, some socks, and it's like we bought the most expensive socks. Yeah, and, and you right said, now. I have socks. And yeah, you do, but they don't match your purse and your shoes. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Not literally. Uh, there you go. <laughs> But you see, but that's a, I'm glad you brought that up because that's still the greatest challenge for me even today. It's like a deck, 
this August. It'll be a decade for me being in an empty nest. Hmm. This August. And you know, I can't what, remember that far back. <laughs> Oh, what do you? Two thousand nine. My first one left in two thousand and three. Two thousand and three. Wow. And then wow. the last one, well, I left. But you still had kids at home, though. Right. Were and empty. then I was um, uh, divorced, and so I actually, the kids stayed at, with their father, so they didn't leave home till. Yep. At whatever point it it I kind of was slammed into it and head on, you know. Yeah, because I... All three of them at once. Yeah, the empty nest happened simultaneously. The only day it was an empty nest, I was divorced. I was single now. And so it, life seemed pretty simple. I did whatever I wanted. You did know? you? When my oldest one um, <laughs> left, um, I sat there, I swear, all night. She oh, yeah? used to have her bedroom was downstairs in the basement, and I sat there in the family room on that couch. Yeah. All night. And to. Because she was gone. Oh. Uh, yeah. Trying to reconnect. I don't know. I think I was in shock or something. That's a very good point. It was so it, quiet. We kind, of, we kind of gleaned over that. That part of the gap. When the, when the gap first occurs, it's a big goddamn adjustment. It seems and catastrophic. And scared of what what is going to happen to her, and is she right. going to be able to take care of herself? And where is she now? And how is she spending her money? And <laughs> right. you know, is, is she safe? And is she eating properly? And and uh, um, does she is she going to need me? What's going to happen in the future? You know, yeah. What who am I now to her? Um, yeah. What, why did she what? leave so early? Did it was it something I did or right? You know. Yeah. Because, I mean, it wasn't really early. She would graduated from high school. Wow. And she had girlfriends, and they were going to go out on their own, and she was in college. And Big adventure. For her, it was. Gigantic for me, it was adventure. Like, and, it, and it was a natural progression of her maturation, of her growing up. I think that, that time frame is like a grieving period for an empty nester. Because some parents will get depressed. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because we we might have glossed over that. Because yeah, there is a that adjustment, that shock, the grieving, it's that empty, the emptiness, the quietness of the house. And then they come back to visit, right? And it just goes by so quick. It's like yeah. they might come by for the holiday season in the winter time. Different and holidays, yeah. They come and uh, they're there. They can only take so much time off school or work, and then they're gone again. And it's like you try to suck up every little bit of, of them yeah. that you can. Um, right. And so, then they're gone and, and so for then, a year. Yeah, and know? it's very easy for us to fall into being needy, needing them, mm. wanting them, and for them to feel, you know, it would be pretty easy for them to start to feel smothered. And just pushing them away by being needy. Right. So, you know, if something is maybe not going so well for them it's also hard to step back and not be giving them advice or saying oh you can't get up early in the morning i'll uh, give you a call right and i'll oh, call I'll you every you. 10 minutes like they don't have an alarm clock right <laughs> you know it's like when you I used to get, time to get up it's like when i used to try and get the boys out of bed for school nothing would wake them until i dumped you know, sprayed them with a spray bottle with water, <laughs> and then they re they wake up right away. Well, you can't do that when they're gone. You can't. Yeah. You got to worry about whether they're going to get their butts out of bed and get to work on time. It's it's their life, and they suffer the consequences if they don't get out of bed and get to work on time. So, I See, had to learn. And it's that thinking that that line of thought you just shared there. It's that thinking that we have to break ourselves from. And now, what if we gave ourselves that much care and attention that we were, that you just described? That we would spray ourselves to wake ourselves up, to get, get ourselves set our out own of the alarm bed, clock, set our own alarm clock, uh, make plans, go do things, and and probably most important is to, is you know, don't be the couch potato, sit on the couch and and wait for the kids to come home. 
and wondering where they are and pining for them to actually go out and live your life. Because the other thing, because the other thing that, that, that is not spoken about a lot from an empty nest is the, is the em, part of the emptiness is loneliness. One of the mm. best ways to not be lonely is to make yourself busy. So, you know, when you start to feel lonely, pick up the phone and call a friend. When you start to feel lonely, get your ass out and go to a coffee shop. Um, uh, phone up a friend and say, let's meet for coffee. Or, uh, you know, if you're interested in writing, uh, sign up for a creative writing course. If you're interested, if you want, always wanted to take some time to do more sewing, you know, take a sewing class. Buy some fabric. Like, yeah, and don't allow yourself to feel alone, alone and lonely by keep yourself occupied I think I remember that one time we went to Banff and right. uh, it was about four thirty-five o'clock and I'm thinking oh we better get going home now because you know usually I would we'd leave that time because we'd have to it took what four hours to drive home and with the kids they'd be grumpy yeah and yeah, to yeah. Get home by bedtime right yeah yeah so 4.30 rolled around, and I'm thinking, you're look, well, we got to go back watch. to the car, right? Yeah. And you're, I remember you telling me that. I was like, yeah. What? And so we decided we were going to go looking in shops because they were still open, and we were going to go and drink coffee and watch yeah. all the millennials oh sitting there God, right next to one another on their phones. None of them are having conversations. They're all on their iPhones. Yeah, they're all huddled around a table <laughs> talk, looking at their phones but not talking to each other. Yeah, we were the only ones that were... <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. sitting there without our phones, just enjoying ourselves, having a coffee, and and uh, we were oogling the kids. We were we yeah. were having fun. <laughs> it, it people watching, but it was nice just watching the kids too. They weren't ours, right? But you know the um, that's the best part is they're not yours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and then finally we got to a certain time, and then we said, well, let's just head on out to our hotel, and we did. But there's that that whole feeling of. Um, finally getting to do those things that you wanted to do but it's a matter of um, choosing to do them and maybe to explore different things um, right. that maybe you're bored with the old stuff and you can explore um, new things and one of the things I used to say is if you want to make friends because we usually don't have a lot of time to make friends while we're running around after the kids um, you can join uh, clubs or groups where they're doing things that you like to do and then you'll f meet other people like yourself maybe some other empty nesters and uh, you can start doing adult things adult things we can adult ourselves we can, we can become up. adult we can adult oh, adulterate <laughs> adulting ourselves so <laughs> so in terms of the gap though in minding the gap so initially there's the anxiety, the sense of loss, maybe even some anger and the tension about the tension about being alone, you know, that sense of being alone. Yeah, then maybe there's being the, angry about it too. It's like, okay, what yeah. about me? You guys can go off on your own and have a life. And now what about me? I gave yeah. up all my life to, to be around the kids. And, and uh, now what? Yeah. You might feel you've been abandoned. It was really interesting. We were at that place of business here this week, and uh, um, this young lady says, "Oh, hi, mom. What are you doing here?" And the mom says, "What are you doing here?" And then, "Well, mom, I'm busy. I gotta go. See you later." It was, <laughs> I thought that was a really, yeah, it was really weird, interesting exchange. There's definitely yeah. some tension there. But then there's the now what gap. Within the gap, there's now the now what. Now what do I do, right? And then there is you know doing. Then I think after that, you could choose to do some research, uh, poke around. You could try, you could experiment. Experiment and be frivolous. You know, do some things you maybe never did before. Experiment, do some things, be frivolous. And then you can, then you can plan. You know, plan what you want to do. Because I know when, you know, when... Um, I experienced this gap and uh, you know after a while you do a, you know I did, a, I did for four or five years I did a lot of travel I, I played around with toys like motorcycles and things like that and I went exploring around and I do things and I'd wake up you know when, when I was traveling I'd 
get up with the sun or went to bed with the sun. And uh, but the problem, you know, the other problem was, is that because it also not only was I empty nest, it's kind of semi-retired. The other problem I had, all my friends were working. They had jobs. I was the only one that didn't have to work. Self-employed. Oh. Because self retired by self I was semi retired, you know, two thousand ten to two thousand fifteen. It's basically, you know, about four and a half years. I didn't work. That I had no W O R K. I just used my money and did what I wanted to do. So a lot of my friends, they work so if you retire early, one of the things one of your gaps is that your social you have to build a new social circle. Right, you have to build a new social circle because a lot. If you if you retire a bit early, or you had your kids early, you're going to be empty nesting early. Oh. While your while your friends, if they had their kids late, they still got their kids in junior high and high school. And it's a it, it's you know so those common bonds that bring us together evaporate. So, it's a real. So it's really about minding the gap. Where are you in the gap? What are you feeling? What are you experiencing? And observing where you're at in the gap. Which side of the gap are you on? Are you in the middle of the gap? Or um, do you choose? Are you just going to kind of try to fly over the gap? And I there's this um, you hear a lot about couples that yeah. don't really know who each other are anymore. Ooh, and it's a big topic. They ran after family all that time, and then they feel like they've grown apart. And so a lot of people will divorce when that happens. Because the or, bridge was the kids. Right. Now, or they go the other way, and they start dating again and getting to know one another. Um, mm. And well, finding okay. out they're both exploring who they are now, but they're also exploring who they are together as a couple. They're, they may not mm -hmm. be that same couple that right. they were before they had the kids they've got a lot more maturity and wisdom they've got more experience in life and experience um trying different things to see what they might like and there may have been things they wanted to do together as a couple like go dancing or um like you said travel or maybe they want to do something with the yard they're going to take down the swing set and put a garden out there or yeah. you know there's there's so many changes that happen in our life but a big one is couples. Yeah, the relationship changes. That's I'm really glad you brought that up. That's a very good point. There was uh, I remember overhearing um, um, overhearing uh, an an older lady um, talking about that her husband better not ever bloody well retire because she thinks she'd probably kill him. She couldn't stand to be around him that much. He, you. You better be busy there, uh, Marvin. You keep yourself busy. Marvin. You get out there. You fix the fence. <laughs> you know, oh. you, you, you plow the field. Uh, don't you, you know, you get out of the house. This is my house. You get out. Or they start nagging the kids to have babies so they can be grandparents. <laughs> well, but then there's that. Yeah. They want to go straight yeah. from being a mother to being a grandmother. Yeah. And, and so where is your time? Where, who are you? Like you're literally trying to uh, uh, replace, replicate that attachment through the grandchildren. But if you, without that attachment, if you didn't pursue that, you would have to. The, the, the other part of the crisis in the gap is you have to face the reality that you're not the same person. Your body's not the same. You don't have the same energy. Uh, but there are still things you want to do. Like we, we have, you know, we have, you know, the, what's your second act going to be? You know, if you, whether you, you know, if you're a, a career person and you retire uh, and you have, or you have an empty nest and, and the kids move out, you can have a second act. There's a second act to life after kids. The second, and after any major change, we have this transition year, this transition gap. In that gap, what are you going to do? And that's that's a lot of why we create our program, uh, mastering the art of momentum. Because 
uh, we created this, this program because we wanted to create a holistic personal development program that would teach people, would provide our clients with all the skills they needed so that they could continue to navigate forward in life and create some momentum. But and one of the key, thi key things is to look at what do, what do I want now? What do I want more of? What do I want less of? We talk about that in our program. We go through, it, it's amazing how deep we have to dive, how many layers we have to pull back because we pile on so many layers of expectations and attachments. So just going and, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a grandparent. But to go and create a whole new identity, and, and I've, seen, I've seen women who then, uh, rather than the daughter hire a babysitter, the grandmothers do the babysitting. And they, so now they're, you know, the kid, the kid will come in the morning, mommy, daughter comes, picks up her child, you know, after work, but, and grandma gets to be grandma. But again, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But is that all you want for your life? What else? What more? What would you do? If you could, what would you do? I guess you can't take an airplane ride somewhere if you don't know your destination. So you got to figure out what it is that you want and then you can start, the vision will come and uh, then at that point you can start making plans. Because my recommendation is, because I've been through semi-retirement, retirement three times in my life. My recommendation is you take three to six months without any expectations of yourself, without making any plans to try and play around with a few different things, but don't make any commitments, don't make any major decisions because you're gonna to have to parachute, you wanna have a soft landing into the transition, into the shift. Because you're gonna, you're gonna, you, because we carry it, because we carry around this identity of being mom, right? Being a parent. Well, it's, now we're still a parent, but we're now mother or father not mommy and daddy. Yeah, it's far different one from the other. Yeah. So that's what we wanted to talk about today. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about navigating uh, the transition after the end of a relationship or divorce or uh, I suppose a, a big transition where you maybe you quit a job, you quit a career, change a career, but mostly we're going to be talking about divorce and talk about ending of relationships and, and how do you transition and start again. So with that in mind, uh, we'll close out today's session. And again, if you have any particular questions, that um, any particular observations, things you'd like to hear from us, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear more because we want this podcast to be interesting, engaging. If you have questions, ideas, suggestions, or topics you'd like us to cover, we'd love to hear from you. So you can reach out to us at Life Origami on Twitter, at Life Origami on Twitter, on Facebook. And if you want, you can also use a thing called the telephone. Uh, you can reach Greg at 403-307-8281. If you'd like to call Amy, you can call me, call at that number, and I'll pass the phone over. So I hope you have a really great day. Stay tuned. Lots coming for you this week.